I wish I had a luggage bag just to emphasize how uh, much there is to unpack with this album. Too easy of a pun though, right? Hey there, welcome back to True North Reviews. My name is Ryan, and today we are reviewing the new Childish Gambino album, 31520. Donald Glover, actor, comedian, producer, writer, rapper, add as many titles as you want to his name, you might as well give him a PhD. It is a true understatement when I say that Donald Glover is one of my favorite artists over the past decade. Uh, he might just be one of my favorite people of all time, because everything he touches seems to turn to gold. Thinking back to his early work, he had plenty of witty words wordplay and unparalleled flows, uh, not to mention many mixtapes that deserve some amount of recognition too. And yes, a lot of critics pass off his first two albums as being corny, cringy, forgettable, and uninspired, but I thought the guy was somewhat a dorky yet likable artist. Uh, he just really loved talking about all the girls he could hook up with. Seriously though, whether he's acting, whether he is writing, whether he's rapping, uh, this guy's a freaking stud. He is a true generational talent. That being said, no matter how big a fan, it was still very hard to predict when this new album would come out. Last we heard from him, Donald was suggesting that this might be the final installment under his Childish Gambino moniker, which given Donald's love for closure, and hanging up hats with his character Troy Barnes on Community and just a busy schedule with everything else he manages to fit in. I can't blame this guy for wanting to put things to rest or at least on hold with his music career. Not because his music is awful, it's actually the complete opposite of that. I just don't want Donald to feel like he is restricted to one lane of music. Speaking of lanes, Donald has been continuously switching up his styles on every album. Uh, just another interesting wrinkle to add to the erratic narrative of this project. In fact, a lot of weird events are are associated with this album and its context. Whether we're speaking about the mysterious livestream unveiling for a single day on Donald's website, or the interesting artistic choices to leave the album artwork blank and uh, the song titles mostly left as timestamps, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. And because of that, I recommend letting this project sit with you for a while. Definitely give it a few listens before passing it off as just experimental garbage. I think there's a lot of deliberate decisions being made about this album uh, being one continuous stream. Uh, you might get lost in some songs not knowing exactly uh, where one begins or one ends. Now for fans who have kept up with previous releases, we got a little a bit of a tease from this experimental mindset of Donald on his previous project, Awaken My Love. No doubt he flexed his R&B and psych rock skills on there, and it is often overlooked other than people loving Redbone. I'm talking about Stand Tall, Have Some Love, and Baby Boy. Those are all great in my opinion. Regardless, Donald is back with his fourth studio album, and frankly, it is his most ambitious and creative of the bunch. It's not hard to tell that he's trying very hard to keep old fans happy by injecting a, a few hip-hop styled flow pretty sparsely spread, and then he's just taking the mix of 70s R&B and funk to another level. So while pushing the genre boundaries and trying to give fans the best of both worlds, does Donald stick the landing? Well, sort of, yes, I would think. It's a hesitant yes, because some tracks are fantastic, some of Glover's most heartfelt and free-flowing lyrics, and just interesting melds of sounds. But with a big risk of experimentation comes another big risk. What I mean is that while implementing Implementing these odd production techniques, uh, elements sometimes on this project feel like it's a, a Yeezus meet 22 million kind of thing going on. It's really difficult to attempt to pin down what this project sounds like. Uh, it's a lot more difficult than just saying it's one or two things, as there's plenty of nuances on the tracks here. But I find that the opening moments on this record, as well as the song 3222, are textbook examples of my comparison to Kanye West and Bon Iver. The first track is like this meandering and somewhat boring intro. A lot of white noise going on here, not too much in terms of lyrical substance either, even though I know that a lot of people are reading into it like it's this big statement for the world ending. So that intro track is definitely like the Bon Iver style song, and then we have 3222. This is like the Yeezus inspired jungle beats going on here. Uh, we have pulsating 808s. Almost tribal-like as well, we have these uh, squirrely vocal samples in there too, just like this hypnotic texture with the other vocals. I kind of like that. However, it's when I hear the farm animals on here, that's when I just drop all expectations for what is on this album. Now, if you find yourself running away from that kind of experimentation and you're looking for a bit more familiarity, uh, 
many of you might start looking for features which none are actually uh, credited in the song titles. Time and 1238 are the two tracks you'll want to check out if you want to hear Ariana Grande or 21 Savage. Time is the track that features Ariana and this one is kind of middle of the road. Uh, there's a lot of auto-tune on Donald's voice, uh, not as bad as what he sounded like on California, that track from his previous project, but still very odd. There is a bit of a debate if he is using auto-tune or not. I'm, I'm not really sure. Either way, Ari is on this track. She's returning the favor of Donald being on one of her previous projects. Even Ariana sounds a bit different than what she normally does. Her voice is fed through a lot of filters. The tune, I will say, is weirdly danceable, just like the same kind of twist and peculiar brand of dancing that Glover had on This Is America. Then talking about the other song that has a feature on here, 1238, I do like the end of this track. Uh, it just takes a while to get going. Weirdly enough, the vocal delivery has a bit of a tinge of uh, Prince influence. Donald is sounding very stylish, and he's got a, a, a wide sounding range. Lyrically, Gambino is outlining a mushroom trip as he's spending a night with a woman. However, when it comes to the vocal performance side of things, I find that the soulful and eccentric delivery from Glover could have been supported a bit more by an interesting beat, because this thing just sounds soulless. That shouldn't be the case when you have a soulful performance. Luckily, like I said, the momentum picks up in the second half. Uh, that's when we have 21 Savage appear. I absolutely laugh out loud with his Popeye chicken reference. And then towards the end of the cut, I really like the thick and muddy bass that uh, roams over the track. It is unfortunate that the final experimental beat didn't convert over to the next song. I liked where it was heading. Um, it was very ominous, as a couple times on this record you'll get that ominous kind of feeling. Might take a dark turn only just to be redirected to to the light side. Uh, not the end of the world though, because the next track on this album is pretty gleeful too. Very happy, catchy tune. It's called 1910. This song is slightly 80s inspired. We got more uh, kind of Prince vocals on here. Definitely more tolerable too, and uh, more memorable uh, as opposed to the previous track that I was talking about with 21 Savage. The other note I want to make about 1910 is just how the chorus melody coincidentally reminds me of Shadows from Because the Internet and that era of Donald Glover. When it comes to Donald Donald's vocal talent and range, he definitely has it on full display with the track Algorithm. It's one of my favorite songs on this project. Uh, we have this low guttural cadence. We also have Donald's falsetto on full display too, and uh, just the wide range of what he can do with his voice. It's incredible. Algorithm as a table setter for this project though, it's like this futuristic wasteland, uh, only reinforced with the song title, uh, with the pun on algorithm, uh, obviously making a nod to the computer uh, coding term. Now if you want some zany, off-the-wall kind of vocal style from Donald, which he has done in a few places in the past, I would recommend checking out the track 5349. The vocals on here are very aggressive, very animated with the flow, uh, true hip-hop with this uh, ad-lib style going on too, which is very strange when it comes to the R&B chorus, which is super calm and tranquil. I teared up while listening to it, which um, I don't know how you can cry to a song that sounds so beautiful in the chorus and that it just sounds so wacky in the verses. For me though, 5349 might just be my favorite song on this project. Again, Donald comes through with a, an incredible closing moment. He does that on all of his albums, what can I say? Now if you're looking to connect with Glover on a more personal level while understanding his values as an individual, um, you might want to check out the song 4748, which is another one of my favorite songs on here. Notably, we hear the same kind of synthesizers that were on a previous track from Glover on Baby Boy. Of course, it is fitting to have one of Donald's sons on this track, as Baby Boy was talking about him, raising him, and now he's on this track here with 4748. The dialogue that happens between Glover and his son on this project might just be the most uh, heartfelt moment on this project and what it has to offer. Trust me, it's hard not to have a smile on your face while you listen to their exchanges. It's also nice that the tune on the track is one of the strongest on the project for sure. Speaking about other catchy tunes on this project, 4226, or Feels Like Summer if you've heard the 2018 single version, uh, is conventionally the most normal of the batch here. Definitely a fun song to sing along with too. And lastly, I do want to give a quick shout out to the cut 2419, which has some beautiful instrumental breaks and lullaby-like passages, possibly inspired 
inspired by Marvin Gaye or Al Green. Now, holding this album back from being good or great are just a couple of tracks that come on the backside, 35, 31, and 39, 28. The former of which has one of the most annoying melodies that I've heard this year. I can't stand it, it just doesn't give enough time to warrant another listen because the melody is the same thing throughout the entire track. To make matters worse though, the guitar playing and the production sounds very shoddy and cheap, and definitely by the time you get to the trap beat drop at the end of the song, um, you'll just be fed up, or at least I was fed up. I certainly hope it's not meant to be a single like it is kind of being promoted like right now. And then the other track I'm not really fond of is 3928. It's okay, it's middle of the road, it's just super boring, which is really upsetting because it starts out as this beautiful acapella, we have uh, the piano softly join in, the vocal harmonies are virtuosic and pretty, almost like a carpenter's track. Instrumentally though, it's just too bare bones and skeletal for me to fall in love with it completely. Unfortunately, that's just how most of this album works. Like, there is a lot of experimentation, but it might just be repetitive or uh, just missing something. So yeah, where I lose interest with a number of tunes on this album, it just comes down to things feeling incomplete, missing pieces here and there, almost like there's like a gap in some of the production techniques. Again, great tracks are on this project. I don't want to take that away from Donald. I like the concept and everything. I just don't think it deserves the perfect 10 out of 10 that many people are giving this right now. Uh, musically, I just feel like it's lacking. Still, I like it. It's decent. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I do side with a lot of the messaging. I think that's great. Um, I just prefer older Gambino projects at this point. There's the review of the new Childish Gambino album. Might be his last. We can only wait and see. Sound off down below in the comments. Be sure to let me know if you're going to miss Donald Glover. Do you think he's going to be coming out with more music in the future? Leave a like, subscribe if you're new in town. I'd appreciate that very much. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Have a rockin' day.